Welcome to Trial Site News Weekly Roundup. This week is everything COVID-19, and it all starts now. Researchers from Monash University's Biomedicine Discovery Institute, or BDI, with the Peter Dotry Institute of Infection and Immunity at Royal Melbourne Hospital recently published the results of a study revealing that ivermectin, an approved antiparasitic drug available worldwide, may actually treat against SARS-CoV-2 when applied to an infected cell culture. Now, in this study, ivermectin materially reduced SARS-CoV-2 viral RNA material in the cell culture by 93% just after 24 hours and by 99.8% 48 hours later. Now, this represents a 5,000% reduction in COVID-19 RNA, suggesting that the drug was reducing essentially all viral material. The Down and Under team suggests that ivermectin, previously known to have an antiviral activity in vitro, is an inhibitor of the causative virus SARS-CoV-2, with a single addition to Vero H slam cells in two hours post-infection with SARS-CoV-2, able to impact a 5,000% reduction in viral RNA at 48 hours. The team Down Under suggests ivermectin be seriously investigated for possible use in humans. So, the medication is used to treat many types of parasite infections such as head lice, scabies, river blindness, and many other conditions. It can be taken by mouth or applied to the skin for external infestations. It was discovered in 1975 and came into medical use in 1981. It is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicine, the safest and most effective medicines needed in a health system. The wholesale cost in the developing world for the tables is just about 12 cents for a course of treatment. In America, it costs less than $50. Dr. Kylie Wagstaff from Monash Biomedicine Discovery Institute reported that when it came to an in vitro test, we found that even a single dose could essentially remove all viral RNA by 48 hours, and even that at 24 hours, there was really a significant reduction in it. Now, this breakthrough raises the hope levels that a more imminent therapy addressing COVID-19 is possible. Trial site news will monitor carefully, and you can sign up to our newsletter for updates. Amgen, the multinational biotech giant and adaptive biotechnologies, announces a mutually exclusive collaboration aimed at helping address the COVID-19 pandemic. The companies will combine their expertise to discover and develop fully human neutralizing antibodies targeting SARS-CoV-2 to potentially treat COVID-19. Well, Adaptive's proprietary immune medicine is a platform for the identification of virus neutralizing antibodies. So, expertise in immunology and novel antibody therapy development, Amgen brings massive scale manufacturing and commercial operations, not to mention financial wherewithal. Adaptive will extend its high throughout platform to rapidly screen the massive genetic diversity of the B-cell receptors and individuals that have recovered from COVID-19. Thereafter, they can identify many thousands of naturally occurring antibodies from COVID-19 survivors and select those that neutralize SARS-CoV-2. Amgen then leverages its world-class antibody engineering and drug development capabilities to select, develop, and manufacture antibodies designed to bind and neutralize SARS-CoV-2. A subsidiary of Amgen located in Iceland called Decode Genetics will offer genetic insight from patients who were previously infected with COVID-19. Researchers from John Hopkins University and other prominent institutions conclude that chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine could be dangerous when combined with the common diabetes drug called metformin. As the COVID-19 pandemic rages, there are many studies incorporating the anti-malarial drug as possible treatment to SARS-CoV-2. Now, this recent research will cause diabetics on metformin to pause and consider if they contract COVID-19 to think twice before participating in a study with this anti-malarial treatment. Clearly, more research is needed and physicians need to be aware of this recent finding. The anti-malarial drugs of hydro... Uh, the anti-malarial drugs of hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine were touted by U.S. President Donald Trump as potential game changers, and trial site news, along with many other outlets, have cautioned that these drugs are not yet proven when it comes to treating COVID-19. So what are chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine used for? 
Well, these drugs have been traditionally used for malaria and certain autoimmune diseases such as lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. A number of sponsors have commenced clinical trials to investigate the use of the drugs as applied to certain cancers as well. And Chai Deng, director of the Ludwig Institute for Cancer Research, said that their interest in this combination arose because both drugs individually have been shown to have anti-tumor effects in pancreatic cancer. Additionally, study author Anir Bon, director of the Center for Pancreatic Cancer Research at MD Anderson Cancer Center, also commenced to our utter surprise, both hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine when combined with metformin resulting in a surprising death rate in 30 to 40 percent of mice. Now, in contrast, there were no deaths in the single treatment groups. With the ongoing pandemic, those with diabetes and taking metformin should mention the study to their physician. Meanwhile, the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland has commenced a volunteer enrollment in a study to determine how many adults are in the United States without a confirmed history of infection with SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. The presence of antibodies in the blood indicates prior infection. In this Zero survey, NIH researchers will collect and analyze blood samples from as many as 10,000 volunteers to provide critical data for epidemiological tools. Now, the goal get a better handle on exactly how many people are infected by the novel coronavirus in the United States. The study will be driven by National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, or the NIAD, and National Institute of Biomedical Imaging and Bioengineering, or the NIBIB, investigator with support from the National Center for Advancing Translational Scientists, or NCATS, and the National Cancer Institute. All of these groups are part of the NIH. Anthony Fauci, NIAID director, asserts that this study will give us a clearer picture of the true magnitude of the COVID-19 pandemic in the United States by telling us how many people in different communities have been infected without knowing it. Because they had a very mild, undocumented illness or did not access testing while they were sick. He said that this crucial data will help us measure the impact of our public health efforts now and guide our COVID-19 response moving forward. So, investigators will analyze blood samples for two types of antibodies, anti-SARS-CoV-2 S protein IgG and IgM, using an ELISA developed by researchers at NIAID and NIBIB in blood samples found to contain antibodies against SARS-CoV-2. Researchers may perform additional tests to evaluate their volunteers' immune responses to the virus. This data may provide insight as to why these cases were less severe than those that lead to hospitalization. Healthy volunteers over the age of 18 from anywhere in the United States can participate and will be asked to consent in enrollment over the telephone. Individuals with a confirmed history of COVID-19 or current symptoms consistent with COVID-19 are not eligible to participate. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved an investigational new drug application from Mesoblast Limited, or NASDAQ MISO, to treat patients with acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, caused by coronavirus infection, with intravenous infusions of its allogenic mesenchymal stem cell product candidate Remes stem cell. The cell therapy-based venture based its decision on evidence that the experimental regenerative therapy has had a positive impact on ARDS in experimental settings. With COVID-19, the prognosis becomes dismal, and hence the company is acting fast to determine if this stem cell therapy investigational product produces positive outcomes. The company will make this investigational product available under the FDA's expanded access, compassionate use, and in clinical trials. The FDA cleared Mesoblast's investigational new drug application application. So what does this mean? Well, this means that the FDA has approved the use of this stem cell-based treatment on patients with severe respiratory conditions resulting from COVID-19. This affords the biotech company an opportunity to treat severely endangered COVID-19 ARDS patients and or plan randomized controlled trials using the stem cell-based therapy, which involves intravenous infusions of its allogenic mesoenchymal stem cell product candidate Ramestem cell. Although most people who are infected with COVID-19 have no or mild symptoms, a subset of those afflicted by this novel coronavirus develop severe respiratory illness and may need to be admitted for intensive care. The impact of this more severe class of symptom can lead to a potentially fatal condition known as acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, a type of respiratory failure. It is characterized by an onset of widespread inflammation in the lungs. Symptoms include shortness of breath, rapid breathing, and bluish skin coloration. For those who survive, a decreased quality of life is common. 
With a trade name of Ryoncil, this investigational cell therapy-based treatment is being developed for various inflammatory conditions. It is an investigational therapy comprising culture-expanded mesenchymal stem cells derived from the bone marrow of an unrelated donor. It is administered to patients in a series of intravenous infusions. The stem cell therapy is believed to have immunomodulatory properties to counteract the inflammatory processes that are implicated in steroid refractory AGVHD by downregulating the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines, increasing production of anti-inflammatory cytokines, and enabling recruitment of naturally occurring anti-inflammatory cells to evolved tissues. Its maker, Mesoblast, first started developing Remestem cell for the treatment of acute graft-versus-host disease, a potentially life-threatening complication of an allogenic bone marrow transplant. In fact, it has been touted by this company as the first cellular therapy product of the treatment of graft-versus-host disease. It is also being developed for other rare diseases. Elsewhere, scientists from Scripps Research have discovered an anti-SARS-CoV antibody called CR3022 that was originally isolated in 2006 by Crusoe Holland BV in the Netherlands. Previously, Chinese researchers suggested that CR3022 cross-reacts against SARS-CoV-2. So, Scripps Research evaluated how this antibody binds to SARS-CoV-2. The San Diego-based research institution vigorously pursues. His antibody recovered from a survivor of the SARS epidemic in the early 2000s and revealed the potential vulnerability of the new coronavirus at the root of COVID-19, reports Scripps Research, authors recently with their results published in Science. Now, this report on their website is the first to map a human antibody interaction with new coronavirus at near atomic scale resolution. It must be understood that this antibody was produced in response to an infection of SARS, which is caused by the SARS-CoV virus. However, it cross-reacts with the new coronavirus SARS-CoV-2. The structural mapping showcased a nearly identical site on both coronaviruses to which the antibody binds. This implies that a functionally important and vulnerable site for this family of coronaviruses. So, the Wilson Lab, led by Ian Wilson D. Phil, Hansen Professor of Structural Biology and Chair of the Department of Integrative Structural and Computational Biology at Scripps Research, is known for its pioneering structural studies of antibodies bound to viruses, including HIV and influenza. These studies have been used to inform designs of vaccines and antibody drugs, as well as other therapeutics. Now, Ian Wilson reports that the knowledge of conserved sites like this can aid in the structure-based design design of vaccines and therapeutics against SARS-CoV-2, and these would also protect against other coronaviruses, including those that may emerge in the future. And he continued by saying that, "...our ultimate goal here is to obtain structural information on antibodies and their binding sites and use that to guide SARS-CoV-2 vaccine design, just as our lab has done with influenza and HIV," reports the study's co-author Nicholas. Wu, PhD, a postdoctoral research associate at the Wilson Lab. So labs at Scripps Research and throughout the world are currently accepting blood donations from people who have recovered from COVID-19 for further studies along these lines. Thank you for joining us for this week's Weekly Roundup. Feel free to like and subscribe our channel, and we'll see you next time.